Oh, my name is Kate, Kate DeVried, and I live in Bridgewater, Nova Scotia, which is on the far east coast of Canada. And my partner, Leon, and I, and our, our young son, Dylan, we are the founding members of Treehouse Village Eco Housing, um, or as they say in the world of co housing, the burning souls. Um, and we are not developers, we are not co housing experts, uh, certainly not sociocracy experts. Uh, we are simply one family who really wants to live in co-housing and we um there aren't any co-housings within 500 kilometers of us so we took the plunge and decided to see if we could get it built here oh yeah i was going to show you where i am <laughs> there we are on the that's nova scotia and we're on the south south shore so today's presentation is uh, really a practical example of how sociocracy has been applied so far in this forming co uh, intentional community. And I say so far because we are in the midst of bringing this community to life. We have purchased land, we have a, complete, a completed uh, design, and we have about half the equity members needed to start construction. So we are now in the process of obtaining our construction drawings and our development agreement and permits and hoping to start construction this summer or fall uh, with a target move in of early 2022. Um, my, uh, my knowledge of sociocracy is really limited to the context of Treehouse Village. Um, but we've learned a lot in a short time and I think that's why I was asked to present here is to share the, the, the real practical tips or things that we've learned about our experience so far. And um, I was just in, in the room, the previous slot with uh, folks who had been hoping to hear from Diana Leaf Christian. Unfortunately, she had some technical issues and couldn't join us, but um, I'm hoping uh, from what I heard uh, going around the room there, uh, I'm hoping that there might be a few things in here for folks to take back to, that, to their groups um, that, that would be helpful. So I'm going to share nine key insights, uh, things that we've learned and um, about implementing and practicing sociocracy. So the first, the first key insight to share, it goes back to um, how we started the project. And Trios Village was launched in September of 2018. And as co-founders, we put out into the world a vision, a set of core values, and what we called at the time a plan, <laughs> which was kind of a summary of what we were envisioning. And it was a test. It was a test to see if this shared vision would be, if this vision would be shared by anybody else, as there anybody else who would want to, to join this. And indeed there were. Um, and within two months we had a core group of about a dozen households. And our approach uh, at the, this time was, was different, uh, informed by failure uh, several years before that, uh, where we had tried to get it off the ground. And at that time, the project was too amorphous. It was, it was trying to be everything to everyone and it just didn't get off the ground. And one of the best pieces of advice we got from a co-housing consultant was to clarify the plan, clarify the box, what is within the bounds of what we are trying to achieve. And uh, so we came up with this point form list, uh, about a dozen points of, you know, started with kind of our vision, like we, our aim is, you know, our plan is to develop a, an environmentally friendly, multi-age, healthy co-housing community in Bridgewater. And specifically, we're going to build 30 homes. It's gonna be in the town of Bridgewater. It's gonna be highly energy efficient. It's going to um, be multi-age and, and so on and so forth. So we had a, this list, this list that we called our plan. And um, little did we know that that plan would later become our organizational aim, which is our overarching aim of what we're trying to do with Treehouse Village. And for those of you who have some familiarity with sociocracy, you'll know that having a clear aim is so critical to making decisions together. So over time, we've had to adjust our grip on those aims and holding some of them more tightly and some of them more loosely, uh, but they've remained central to what Treehouse Village is. And we 
refer to them every time that we make a big decision together. The second key insight is deciding how to decide. So for the first while, we assumed that we would use consensus to make decisions. It seemed to be what most co-housing communities used. Uh, but as we started to learn about it and, and visit communities and see it in action, we were hearing that there were issues <laughs> and that communities were shifting over to sociocracy, some of them. And so that got us curious and we wanted to learn more. We wanted to find out what other options existed. And uh, our co-housing consultant, Jason Robillard, happened to have done an introductory workshop on sociocracy with um, Diana Leaf Christian and uh, he encouraged us to look into it. So our first impressions were very positive. We quickly discovered a wealth of resources to support groups in learning sociocracy, um, but none of us had ever heard of it before, uh, let alone done any reading or training in it. Uh, we were all completely new to it, um, but we went with our guts and we brought our first ever proposal for our first ever group decision to the group on December 9th, 2018. Um, we printed off the decision-making one-pager guide from uh, Sociocracy for All's uh, website. We handed it out and we wrote the proposal on the whiteboard and we uh, guided ourselves through our very first consent decision, which was to adopt Sociocracy as our governance system. Um, and following that decision, we immediately ordered a, a box of the Many Voices One Song Handbook. We scheduled our first consultation with Sociocracy for All, or SOFA, as I will for, refer to them from here on. Um, and we jumped in with both feet and we have not looked back. So yeah, we ordered the box of books. We, uh, we started figuring out how we were gonna learn, learn this. Um, we knew that investing in the social community would be just as important or maybe more important than the investments we were making in the physical community. So our design professionals, architects, project manager, et cetera. Um, so one of the first things we needed to do is we, we were forming our development company, our development entity. We needed a shareholders agreement. As part of that, we wanted to include our governance system, our governance agreement. We needed help writing that. We talked to SOFA. They gave us a template to use for that. We adapted it for our context and um, were able to get that, that going right away. Um, we use the Many Voices One Song as our handbook. Um, most of our members own it and we, it's the first place we go whenever a question comes up about governance. We, uh, our co-housing consultant, Jason, who's uh, on the left side of this picture, he's made a commitment to learning along with us. So he knows just, just slightly more, I think, or, or did, yeah, slightly more than we do. And, and we're learning together uh, as we go. And he's been particularly supportive of some of the major decisions we've made where we brought him in actually to help facilitate as an external facilitator for some of those big decisions. And periodically uh, we book a consultation with Ted or Jerry to ask specific questions um, about uh, issues that we're having. And uh, all of those investments have paid dividends. They're, they've been very, very much worth it. So as I, imagine, as I said before, we, uh, nobody knew anything about sociocracy when we started. And so we just basically all jumped in together at the, the members we had at the time. Um, so we started one of the empowered learning circle study groups right away. So that's the, uh, it's like a six session self-guided study group that SOFA offers. And we started one right away. The group uh, right above the white bubble is the first group that went through it. And um, immediately we found it to be a helpful way to learn. And so we got three more groups started right away. So um, within a couple of months, uh, three quarters of our members had all participated in an ELC. And uh, we had a really good, uh, a lot of members had a, a, a base level of knowledge of sociocracy. Um, and it, I think because uh, it was new to us all, we, we were all equals in that learning, which uh, I, think, I think served us really well at that time and enabled people to step into roles uh, with no experience because none of us had any experience. Um, so um, 
the by the time we formed that organizational structure, it, it wasn't actually that difficult to populate the circles and 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 get the roles selected. Encouraging members to learn about sociocracy has been a high priority uh, of ours at, at Treehouse Village. Um, we take new members through an orientation process that includes a focus on sociocracy and um, and we're continuing to run the ELC learning groups. We had uh, we had three more groups uh, that ran this past fall and winter, and we're about to start another one, which will be our eighth our eighth ELC so far. Um, we've actually because we've done it so many times, we've adapted the curriculum a bit to be more um, uh, yeah to to use examples relevant to Treehouse Village, which has been been great and so far supported us in that. We also do a lot of experiential learning. So new members uh, come to meetings right away. They get to participate right away. And there's a lot of learning by doing and, and having support from those members who have more experience. Um, but it's not easy. And one of our challenges has been uh, onboarding new members in a project that is constantly in flux. So typical in co-housing, in forming co-housing, there's people coming and going all the time. and so there's a big difference in the level of knowledge between those of us who've been in the project a long time and those who are just coming in. And the other thing that's changing is the pace of the project is a lot speedier now than it was a year ago. So when new members come on, they have a lot of content to learn about what's happened in the project and the decisions we've made, and they have to learn the process as well. So it's a lot. And um, it's, it's a real balance for our orientation coordinator to figure out how to support folks to learn at a pace that works for them um, and, and, and get up to speed. We've heard new members say that it's overwhelming. It's overwhelming to learn this whole new system. It's daunting because it's, it feels like it's a whole new language and, um, and a new way of working together, uh, which it is for most people. Um, and we found that as time has passed, new members have been more hesitant to step into roles uh, because <clears throat> Um, they look around and see people who have been doing those roles for a long time and are quite skilled at it. Um, and yet, as we grow as an organization, we need to keep having new members stepping into those roles, um, stepping into circles so that uh, we can get the work, the work done. Um, so yes, so although we have this dedication to supporting our new, new members, all members to learn, it is, it is, it is challenging, um, for sure. Divvying up the work. So this is uh, um, one of the key pieces of sociocracy is, is the organizational structure and how the circles are linked and how the work gets divided and divvied up. Um, and this has been such a gift to us because we have been able to, um, <laughs> uh, to accomplish a lot of work by, uh, by splitting it up. Um, the first group that went through the uh, empower, uh, Empowered Learning Circle curriculum did picture forming on our organizational structure, which you can see in the pink marker there. Um, and, uh, and we literally cut out circles and played with them on the table and, and, and figured out our very first prototype for our, our organizational structure. And we talked a lot about our aims, our domains, how are we gonna divvy things up in order to get the work done? Um, so in, uh, in February of 2019, we gathered in a big room uh, around round tables and we rolled out our first organizational structure. And this is the proposal we brought to the group. Um, and uh, so we had a consent decision to, um, to accept this organizational structure. And um, we, we populated the circles right away. So people went and joined a circle that they wanted to be a part of. And right then and there that weekend, we held selections. Uh, we had our first roles um, selected for these circles. And uh, near the end of the weekend, we held a general circle meeting. So we had the general circle members who had been selected uh, have their first fishbowl uh, general circle meeting. And from there, uh, the circles adapted their aims and domains and they got down to work. Uh, some created subcircles, some created organizational roles, and we, we learned to trust each other. 
uh, which was made easier by remembering that we had what we had in common, which is this organizational aim, going back to the first key insight, um, that touchstone that we always come back to in making our decisions. And establishing this trust has been really critical um, because we make very few decisions as a full circle with all of our members. Um, we really limit those decisions to only the, um, the most critical decisions that we feel in our development need to be made by everybody. And so there's only been a few of those decisions in our whole existence. Um, and, and therefore it means that members need to learn and uh, that, that a circle, a working circle really needs to gain the trust of people who are outside the circle in order to get the work done and, and, and make decisions. So when we do make decisions in, a, in the full circle, um, you know, because sociocracy is not designed to make decisions in that larger group, we have to pay really close attention to our process. And so what we have learned, what, how we've had success is by breaking the decision process down into parts and by working to solicit as many clarifying questions and reactions as we can before the meeting day um, uh, to try to really uh, make sure members are coming into the decision meeting um, with their questions already answered and um, having a chance to, to have their reactions shared such that we can um, really just go for consent when we actually meet. And that, that has proved to work fairly well for us for these major decisions. Um, and it's meant that these major decisions, instead of becoming these um, grueling, um, you know, hours and hours of decision, uh, they become uh, in some ways a celebration of a huge milestone. So just a couple of weeks ago, we had a full circle consent decision to our design. And that was a, an overall fairly positive process and people left um, really feeling good about the community, feeling connected to each other and like, yeah, we did this. Um, I'll add here just a quick, a quick note that in our organization, we have two levels of membership. We have associate members and equity members. And um, so with the associates, it's like the try it out membership. Um, they get to participate in the clarifying question and quick reaction rounds, and they also get to sit on circles, um, but only the equity members participate in the consent round of decisions. And that has, um, that has worked really well for us. Uh, the sixth key insight is learning by doing. I think I've probably already made this point <laughs> that we just jumped in and started doing it. And uh, we, once we had the organization the structure set up, we came to appreciate how much we could get done in, by working in this way. Uh, the project pace really picked up and um, we had enough base knowledge to, to operate sociocratically and move things forward. Um, the Many Voices, One Song uh, handbook, we, we really used that as much as we could and we endeavored to implement as much of it as we could almost at once. Um, it's a lot, it, it's a lot to do at one time, uh, for sure. But because so many of the parts of sociocracy are, are, are integrated and, and complementary, um, we thought we could benefit from trying to do as much as we could uh, at the same time. So our implementation was far from perfect. Um, there's still, uh, yeah, we, we've tweaked it as we gone, have gone along, but this, the, the good enough for now mantra has ended up being true for us most of the time. And so um, this, is a, this is a list, a self-assessment list that I found uh, that SOFA had created of different parts of sociocracy. And um, yeah, I'm, I'm proud to say that our organization has already done all the bolded things and the two items that aren't in bold are, are in process. So we're doing a pretty good job, I think, of trying our best to do the, all the pieces and they work so well together. Um, even though it's daunting uh, to, um, to tackle them all. Um, I wanted to take a moment to talk about the, the mantra, the good enough for now, safe enough to try of sociocracy, which has, uh, we've, we really appreciate this and it has been very helpful to us. And it's also prevent, uh, presented us with some challenges because we are, uh, in the design and the development phase of, of co-housing, we're making a lot of decisions that are permanent, um, that can't easily be undone. 
So how can a permanent decision uh, of a design element, for instance, be good enough for now? Um, we can't set a three month term to revisit um, the decision of which piece of land we purchase um, or what the roof design, roof line looks like. Um, these decisions are difficult, impossible, or extremely expensive to change. Um, but in spite of this, we've managed to still use sociocracy and apply it to how we make decisions. Um, and we found that, again, going back to our first key insight around the organizational aim and, and holding, upholding that aim has been so critical um, for decisions, especially those that are, uh, need to be not just good enough for now, but good enough, period. Um, and making decisions that are, uh, the, the aim is about making decisions that are good for the whole community. And uh, that's what we've um, been able to hold on to in these big decisions. Number seven is around taking care of each other. Uh, it could also be number one because it's, it's so important to how we work together. Um, we, have what seems like a million decisions to make <laughs> in, in getting this, this community um, built. And there are many hours of meetings. Um, our organization, there's, there's a circle meeting uh, almost every other night on our calendar. Not that everybody's a part of all the circles. Uh, that, that doesn't happen, but there, there's just a lot of meetings. And, and what, I, what strikes me about all of our meetings is that so many times I have heard people in the checkout round say that they are doing better when, than when they arrived in the check-in round. That the meeting itself has somehow made them feel better, more connected, more at ease, more relaxed, more informed. Um, and I think that that's a real gift. I, I don't, I, I, in my, my, my meeting life before sociocracy, I didn't hear that <laughs> very often. And so that, um, that has meant that people want to be a part of the work. They want to come to meetings because um, they feel good. <laughs> um, so I think, you know, how we treat each other, that members have active roles in, in the circles, their membership is meaningful, uh, the rounds themselves enable balanced participation, the check-ins and check-outs, uh, they help connect us, we learn about each other, uh, it brings a sensitivity to how we interact with each other in a meeting. And, you know, we're not just decision makers. We're not just trying to make decisions to build something. Our intention is to be neighbors with each other at the end of this. And so building those relationships is, is uh, if, if that's not happening, then, then why? <laughs> why do it, right? And we're finding that sociocracy enables us to build those relationships. Um, I would also say that uh, the pieces, some of the pieces of sociocracy, like the check-in and check-out rounds, the evaluations, um, the performance reviews, it invites members to be honest about their participation. And um, when people have had things come up where it's changed their capacity to do work, they're able to say that and the circle is able to, to help support that person. I know that's happened to me several times where I've been overloaded and the circle has supported me to help figure out how to how to still get the work done and, and help take care of me. Um, we have some really nice dynamics in our community where we have uh, meetups or little little uh, little meetings of all the types, uh, all the people who hold a, a role type. So all the facilitators sometimes get together and they provide mutual support for each other. And all the secretaries will get together and they'll talk about the agenda template and how to make it better or um, whatever it is. And, and these really help people do their role better um, and give that uh, sense of connection to somebody who's also doing the same, the same role. Um, and we have also some informal mentoring that's happening. So when someone leaves a role, often they're mentoring the person who's coming, coming into that role next. And then the last thing about um, taking care of each other that I want to mention is that we've also made a commitment as a community to practice nonviolent communication. And all of our members um, are receiving training um, in nonviolent communication as well. 
So um, it's such a bonus to us that sociocracy and NVC are so complementary. Um, and while we are a young organization and relatively inexperienced in both sociocracy and nonviolent communication, we can already, we already feel like we're reaping the benefits of, um, made, of having made commitments to both of these approaches. The eighth key insight is just a short one. Um, it's kind of a technical one, but um, we have really benefited from paying close attention to setting up and caring for the tools that enable the work to get done well. Uh, for us, this includes Zoom, uh, Google Drive, Google Docs, Google Groups. Uh, we have a master agenda and minutes template that uh, we use across the organization. Uh, and we have tech support for all of our members to make sure they're able and comfortable to use all of these tools. So even before the pandemic, um, these tools were critical for us because we have members spanning eight time zones uh, from California all the way to Bristol, England. And so these, um, there's the uh, folks from Bristol waving. <laughs> um, so these digital tools, they support the functioning of our circles, they increase transparency, and they facilitate inclusion. So before we were meeting entirely online, um, there was a difference between the level of engagement of our remote members and those who were able to meet in person. And now that we're all online, the playing field is equal and people I think feel more equally included in, in the experience. Um, and I have to also say that having been a part of um, some meetings uh, on Zoom since the pandemic started that uh, are not using sociocracy, that sociocracy really like the rounds and the way that a meeting is structured works so well online compared to other, uh, other ways of meeting. All right, last one, you still with me? <laughs> okay, um, so this is that, this is that feedback, uh, continuous improvement, uh, making it better as you go. So if we had tried to set all of this up uh, on paper uh, at the start, uh, we never would have gotten to where we are. Um, by jumping in, learning as we go and improving as we go, that's how we got to where, where we are. So we love that sociocracy allows us and encourages us to uh, be dynamic over time. Um, they support us to adapt and improve. Um, our project is work going at a breakneck pace and we find it hard. We d definitely find it hard to take the pause, to do the evaluation, to do the reviews. Um, but we do it because we've seen how it benefits us and we make the, the time for it. Um, I wanna show you kind of a visual example of how we, um, how we have used that sort of continuous feedback process to change our organizational structure over time. So you saw, this was our very first prototype of our organizational structure. I'm just gonna zip through and show you that in one year, this is how our organizational structure evolved over time. And there we are today. Yeah, so our physical design is done. Um, we're hoping to break ground. Uh, we have every confidence that sociocracy will continue to serve us throughout the rest of the development um, and eventually when we live together after move in. Um, in fact, we think sociocracy is actually going to serve us even better once we get to move in because, um, you know, that's when we'll really be doing, you know, a lot of policies and, and we'll be in more of a, a maintenance or a, uh, you know, maintaining our community mode rather than all of these all of these build decisions. Um, you know, sociocracy, it's not perfect and we haven't implemented it perfectly for sure, but it's provided us with a way to work together uh, to get a tremendous amount done um, while supporting our community to come together and bond. 